So once again, welcome you all to the continuation of our previous lecture in which we are talking about the regulatory framework. And then we ended at the, the barriers of international harmonization. Okay, so today we are going to look at one more aspect of the IFRSs. We are going to look at the standard setting process. So that's today's agenda. So standard setting process. So standard setting process. So setting process. We have given it a nickname called the due process. So the due process, the due process, that's the nickname. Now, this process, this had the steps that the IFRS goes through to set a new standard or to update existing ones. So whether they are setting a new standard or they are updating an existing standard, still go through the same process. Still goes through the same process. Good. So we should take notes of that. So that is it. So whether we are updating new standard, sorry, updating existing or developing new IFRS, so stages that the IASB goes through, IASB goes through to either develop a new standard, new IFRSs, or to update or revise an existing standard that is all okay let's start with the process let's start with the process yeah. the very first step that the international accounting standard board normally goes through is the agenda consultation good great so that is the very first step which is the agenda consultation and plan of work so the first step is agenda consultation agenda consultation and plan of work Wow. Plan of work. That's the very first step of every standard. Now with the very first step, the IASB have to consult for ideas. So here, IASB have to work seek for advice have to consult for what advice great so this the isb have to consult for ideas advice from the general public and the internal members. Good. The internal members. So, with this, let me take the consultation first or the idea how they can generate the idea. Now, they can take this idea we have internally and externally they can consult for idea both internally and what externally 
So these are two ways in which the board can consult for ideas. Okay. Now let's pick the one after the other internally. So internally, they have to schedule a meeting with the advisory council. That's the IFRS advisory council. So the external consultation, sorry, the internal consultation will take place or to be consulted from the IFRS advisory council. So as we look at the structure from the previous lecture, you realize that we have IFRS advisory council. So this council will have to give the, the board an opinion on the standard that they want to publish or they want to update. So that is how the agenda consultation take place internally. So internally, they have to now seek for ideas, opinions, and advice or counsel from that of the advisory council. Now let's look at the external. Now for the ISB, every year this board Every year, the board publish an information or a document, and that document moves around to all member states and countries and institutions that uses the IFRS in their reporting. So any country that uses the IFRS, every year, there'll be some documents being given to you for you to append and include any comments or any challenge that you have with any of the outstanding standards, the IFRSs. So externally, they go through comments received previously, so previous comments, previous comments. So when they send the document, any challenge that you have with any existing standard, you jot it down, including uh, any other comments that you need to must be taken into consideration. So this is how the board will consult for ideas. So they just have to pick this document, go through, and now take into consideration suggesting or comment being passed by the general public so that when they are developing new standard or they are updating an existing standard they will take this comment into consideration and work with it why are they doing this they are doing this because um the IFRSs, the majority of them are used by the general public, not the board themselves. So we also, there must be a need for them to hear from the general public. Good, because they will finally use or they will adopt the IFRSs. Okay. So that is the agenda consultation and right after the idea gathering of the idea the objectives of the standard why they are updating why they are bringing new standard the reason for that standard all of them will be the agenda consultation i know that they that they have to plan the work so after they've consulted the idea both internally and externally then they will now plan the work. Where do we start from? Where do we end? What must we include? What must we ignore? In all, based on the comment and the advice received from our people, what should be the main focus? Who should be the target? That is all. 
Okay, so that's the end of the first step. So we are saying in summary, they have to consult for ideas, advice, and they do that internally, but through their advisory council. They can also do that externally by the general public comments or comments received from the general public. Previous ones, and then they take into consideration. And right after the idea generation, they now plan the work or plan the plan the development of the IFRS. So let's go to step two. After the planning, what next? Now here they have to put the plan in the paper form, in the written form. So the written version of the plan where to start from the ideas, putting these ideas together. Now we pass on to what you call discussion paper. Discussion paper. Okay. So, so that is the discussion paper. At this stage, all the ideas, all the ideas you've got so far. Now let's develop the standard. Or here, the first ring of the standard. I call it the skeleton or just the bones, the skeleton version of the standard. The main point, the topical issues. So at this stage, the discussion paper will now tell us what will go into the scope, objective and scope. So mainly we can talk about five items there. Objective and scope, basic terms, recognition measurements, and disclosure requirements. These are the few items that goes into the discussion paper. Following the a successful plan. So, so objectives and scope. Objective and scope. Uh, let me make it one, two, some terms. And then recognition, then measurements. But the key items that make up the standard. And then the disclosure requirement. The disclosure requirements. So I call it just the skeleton, the bullet point, the main issues that we have to talk about. That is why we call it what discussion paper. The main issue that we have to talk about. That is the discussion paper. Good. And here, kindly take note that here the, the board may, it is not compulsory, take note. They may send the discussion paper back or send it to the general public. It's a may, not compulsory. Take note that the discussion paper is not compulsory to be sent to the general public for comment. No. So they can keep the discussion paper to themselves. Okay. That is the end of the second stage. They have to now develop the discussion paper based on the agenda, the idea that they've consulted together. Okay, let's go to the third stage, but let me finish it by beginning it here. So we so say we they have to drop what you call a discussion paper. Third, now they have to produce or prepare what you call the exposure draft. Exposure draft. Exposure draft. You call it EV, right? Yes, the executive director. Executive director. ED. So the exposure draft comes in 
Now this is the main issue, main issue, or I just call it just a skeleton. So skeletical section, but the exposure draft talks about the actual. It's just the draft version of the standard draft. Draft version of the IFR register they are developing. The draft. As soon as they accept it, that's all. That's the standard. Just like now, they have to add more. Go expand the explanation, expand the objective, expand every item that they have included in the discussion paper. So the exposure draft is a stage where the standard has reached its full disclosure and it includes all items. So yeah. Everything that's supposed to be in at this stage is in. Everything that we want to talk about this is like no, no shortcuts. All of the discussion about that one contains only the main point. But it's not contains everything. Main point plus so normally we said that with the exposure draft, they've added a little fresh to what to the bones. Discussion about just the bones. Have you seen how they build? A star building. First of all, they have to build the pillars before now they add the blocks or the bricks to it. So, discussion paper is the building of what? The pillars. And now, if you add the bricks or the other material to it, you now go to the exposure draft. Now, with the exposure draft, it gives rooms for it explained all the five items raised here in detail. For instance, the scope, the objective, the recognition criteria, the measurement. It gives more insight of them. So any point raised in the discussion paper will be dealt with in detail at the exposure draft. Now, with the exposure draft, that one, it's a must. It was a must. The ISB have to send it to the general public for comment. Exposure draft, it's a must. Send it to the general public for comment. So after the draft version, they don't need to keep by themselves because they are not going to probably use it most. It's the general public that will use it. So they have to be aware of the draft version. Unlike letter days, probably you hear them saying, oh, we're not informed that there's a standard coming. We don't know about this standard. So we're not going to adopt it. No, 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 not that. So a copy of the, the exposure draft has to be sent to the general public. So that is for discussion. So that's the third stage of the standard setting process. The third stage of the standard setting process. The actual work is done at the third stage. The detail work, that's a draft version. Everything has been explained, well established. If, if they just approve it, oh, that's the standard. That's the IFR, then we are done. Okay, so now let's move on to the fourth stage of the standard setting process, so called, or we call it so called the deal process. That's the nickname, the deal process. So let's go to step four. Now, at this stage, if the comment received from the general public required a revision, what do you think? Of? will happen and the exposure draft need to be what revised so you have what you call revision revision of what exposure draft exposure draft so easy right so they have to revise the exposure draft following the comment received following the comment received from the general public and other giant international financial institutions. Good. Now, 
they have to revise and revise and revise and again revise and revise until the final exposure draft is being accepted by both the general public and the member board. Don't forget that the board is about 13 members. Currently, they have exactly 13 members. Good. Including the board chairman, 13 in number, so that they will sit on this and vote in for the IFRS to be published. So they have to revise and revise until everything is okay or finally accepted by the general public and has been approved by the board. Approved by the board. Okay. Now let's go to step five. After the final revision, what do you think will happen? So after the final revision, then we have what you call new IFRS is issued. So new standard will be issued. So new IFRS is issued. The new IFRS is issued to the general public. What do you think after the issue, what, what will happen? This is where to be published worldwide and gazetted worldwide. And again, it comes with the effective date or it comes with issues like, or the earlier adoption is, is available. Even though the effective date is ahead of us, you can still adopt it before time good so what do you think after the new ifrs is, is issue what do you think will happen so if there's issue then there must be what adoption as usual so point six will be or the stage six this one move with the the general public so new ifrs so here will be adoption of the new ifrs Adoption of new IFRS. Adoption of new IFRS. Okay, so here this is where companies, member states, adopt and apply the requirements in the IFRS. So here, member states, countries, institutions, corporations, international bodies, that's a international financial institutions such as World Bank, IMF and others they have to adopt the new ifrs and start using it now step seven the last step will be we have what you call post implementation review post implementation review that's the last stage post implementation review Post implementation review. So, post implementation review. Okay, at this stage, at this stage, the IFRS Foundation, through the Interpretation Committee, have to satisfy or themselves that the requirements of the IFRSs are being adhered to accordingly. Organizations, directors, companies, accountants are not misinterpreting 
the requirement of the, that standard. So here, all what happened is this. The IFRS interpretation committee have to now prepare a document that we will call it explanatory notes so that they will issue this interpretation to back and help users understand the requirements of the IFRS. So in Ghana, for instance, it's like a practice note. Anytime there's an act of parliament, there must be a regulation or a practice note to explain what that particular act is talking about. Other than that, people will misinterpret the acts or the IFRSs to suit their own preferences. Good, so that is it. So if you check the requirements, and you are abusing or misusing these IFRSs, then there must be a workshop, a conference to train people, organizations, resource persons, how to use these IFRSs or what is the actual requirement. Okay. So these are the stages that ISB have to go through. Now, I will show you a copy of an exposure draft. As we said that it's just a um, document that uh, we normally send it out for general comment. I will show you currently, uh, they are in the process of updating or revising IFRS 16, IFRS 16, uh, and a part of IFRS 15. There's a session called Sale and Lease Back. Sale and Lease Back. And Lease Back. Good. So it wasn't um, given a specific treatment where there has been a sale, both in IFRS 16 and IFRS 15 revenue. So currently talking, they are updating that standard. And we told you that whether we are setting new standard or we are updating existing standard, we go through the same process. So let me just um, walk you through this one. So as I've projected here. Great. So this is IFRS standard. Exposure draft. This is 2020. It's about the lease liability in the sale and lease back. Proposed amendment to IFRS 16. Comment to be received by the end of what? 29th March 2021. So if you have any comments, kindly pass the comment in. So this is a, a section of what? Exposure draft. It contains the comment section, how the comment should be written. And then it contains the standard itself. That part that they want to amend. You have to copy it and place it in so that when you read that part that they want to amend, you like comment about it. And as we said, the exposure draft, it's compulsory for the board to send it to the general public. Unlike the discussion paper, that one is a may. So if you go down like this, I'll, I'll be see the letterhead, right? ISB and IFRS, okay. So exposure drafts, lease liability in the sale and lease back proposed amendment to IFRS 16, comment to be received by 29th March 2021. Let's go through a bit of it. Okay. 
Okay, so the exposure draft, uh, that's the ID number, that's like four, April, 2020, April, where they do it. List liability in the same list, but it's published by the International Accounting Standard Board for comment only. For what? Comment only. Comment need to be received by what? 29th, my soul. Let me have your comment, or you can also pass it. And it should be submitted by email to this particular mail. Good. Is there? So now let's come here. All comments will be on the public record, or public records, and posted on our website. Good. Unless the respondent requests confidentiality, yeah. Such requests will not normally be granted unless supported by a good reason. <laughs> I, yeah. Of course, if you don't want your detail to be published, that you are the one that's giving this comment. For example, commercial confidence. Please see our website for details of the policy. Okay. Okay, so that is the first section. I will not need to read all. I have to go straight. So let's go straight to the invitation of comments at page four. So the board invite comment on the proposal in this exposure draft, particularly on the questions set out below. Comment are most helpful if they are addressed. Great. Sorry, that was a short interaction. Let's continue. As they are saying, uh, comments are helpful if they are like address the question as stated. Don't change the question. Don't add your own stuff to it. So so this is the first question. Indicate a specific paragraph to which they relate, especially, you know, the actual standard deal with paragraphs. All the points raised in the IFRSs are in paragraphs. So tell us, maybe paragraph 23, 25, sub A, B, or C. Refer them. Don't just write it empty like that if you're giving a comment. Now, identify any wording in a proposal that is difficult to translate. These are how we want them all. Include any alternative the board should consider if applicable. Exactly. What they should like, the second idea. So the board is requesting comment only on matters addressed in this exposure draft only the matters addressed here. So the questions are here. Question one is in here. Question two is there. And then the deadline for it is also there. So this is just a brief or a sample of the IFRS um, 16, still in list back, where they want to amend, not the entire IFRS 16, just the section 100 going. That is where I want to amend. So these are the sections, especially this section. These are the sections that you want to amend where underlined all the underlying sections. So kindly take note of that. Okay. Great. So basically, that was a sample of the exposure draft that currently we have. So I'll probably comment on it and then we also look at the same issue. The issue was raised last sitting when the strategic business reporting badge 
we're about to sit for exams. And again, the corporate reporting bikes to, we had the same challenge. Thank God that um, it has been ratified and being amended. So we will write the comment and I'll share the comments with you. Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of the standard setting process. So thank you very much. So we are done with the regulatory and conceptual framework. Follow us to the next section where we'll be looking at question solving. So we take just 30 to 45 minutes to review certain questions and how to approach them. So from 30 to 45 minutes ahead of us, purely for question solving. Can you join us in the question solving stage? If you have not subscribed, kindly subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification button. Thank you.